It's okay I call you by names rather than yeah. name and surname, okay? Oh. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to episode 40 of Sugidama podcast, the podcast about Japanese sake, the drink that has been the subject of several excellent documentaries because it's inspirational, interesting and complex. And today we are going to talk about a brewery that actually inspired such a film called The Birth of Sake. But before I introduce my guests and the brewery, let me tell you about our sponsor, London Sake, who has one of the widest selections of premium and craft sake available online today. You can choose from over 100 sake from 25 breweries and they will deliver across the UK and many European markets. And if you don't know what sake to choose, you can use simple online tasting notes together with very sensible and affordable food pairings to help you decide. What's more, you can get a 10% discount by just using the code SUGIDAMA, all caps, during checkout. London Sake, making sake simple. My name is Alex and I live in London. I'm a certified sake specialist, sake judge, sake educator and sake advocate. Besides this podcast, I have SUGIDAMA blog, where I write about all things sake and publish tasting notes, overviews, and information about sake events happening in London. Today, I continue my Brewery Focus mini-series, and we will talk about Yoshida Sake Brewery, the maker of a famous Tederigawa brand with Asami Tasaka and Masayo Nuttall from World Sake Imports UK. World Sake Imports is one of the key sake importers here in the United Kingdom and in the United States, of course, where their headquarters are based, bringing such famous sake brands as Dewazakura, Kamoizumi, Masumi, Tamagawa, Sahomare, and other to our shores. So without further delay, let's listen to our conversation with Asami and Masayo about the Yoshida Sake Brewery and the amazing Tedorigawa Sake. Please welcome our guest. I'm here with uh, Asami and Masaya from World Sake Import UK, uh, one of the leading importer of Japanese sake in, in the country. And we're going to talk about one of the breweries they represent and to give you some kind of flair of um, sake this brewery makes and how it tastes and uh, some history behind. But first, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello. My name is Asami Tasaka, I'm the Managing Director of World Sake Imports UK. So we started the uh, UK office in 2008. Uh, however, I joined this World Sake Imports, which is established in uh, 1998 in Hawaii. Uh, America. <laughs> and uh, I joined in New York in 2002. So uh, I've been working in the sake industry for quite a bit of <laughs> years. And we import 12 sake breweries and three shochu distillery from uh, all over uh, Japan. Our policy is to bring our best sake with best conditions. Mm. So we bring all the sake in a uh, uh, different container, which is refrigerated container, since the beginning uh, when we started over 20 years ago. And Masayo-san. Hello, hi, this is Masayo, and I'm the sales representative of the World Sake Imports UK, and I'm working with Asami closely. I joined this company back in 2018, and um, was a little bit of, um, how can you say, um, some nice introduction to the sake, because I love the sake already back in Japan time, mm -hmm. uh, but then I have opportunity to join this company, so I've been working since then. Okay, yeah, sounds good. So, um, how did you, I mean, I'm just wondering, how did you get into sake in the first place? Why, why sake? I, I understand that you are Japanese, but still. 
<laughs> I think many of Japanese people who are working in the sake industry are quite similar. When I was in Japan, the sake quality wasn't that great. And I was very young too. I was just about to start drinking alcohol. Then I left to uh, the US to study. And uh, when I was studying uh, the business management, um, I was working at the Japanese restaurant, which mm. is quite common. And one of the restaurants I was working was at Sakagura. Uh, which they have 300 different kinds of sake by the grass. And I was uh, learning a lot about sake. Uh, and then those uh, people who taught me sake wasn't really Japanese too. <laughs> and then I realized I was studying a little bit more about wine in Japan. Then I didn't know anything about my own country's alcohol. So I thought, you know, this is kind of shameful that you know, those people who are, uh, knows more about uh, sake is American and then uh, I'm Japanese and I have no clue. So I decided to go visit the brewery and I fall in love since. So, and of course I tasted the premium sake, the fine sake is completely different than the sake that I had in Japan. So those were just eye-opening for me. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Uh, so for me, I'm a little bit of a different. As I mentioned, I've been working in this industry for five years, uh, five years past, but I loved the sake already. And uh, then I also studied wine back in Tokyo time. Um, so I kind of know what I actually like. But then when you actually studied about it, it's just an eye-opener. And then since we are now educating people or spreading the world, uh, you know, the world of the sake in and outside of Japan, that's uh, pretty interesting. And I, um, yeah, I enjoy it quite a lot. And uh, it's a little bit of a, unexpected that, you know, ended up working in sake you know, industry outside of Japan. But this is how they, I think, you know, the way to go. So, yeah, here I am. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's quite, quite, quite usual story, but still... It's, it's, it's quite interesting how people got into sake because sometimes people got like an eye-opener moment, a aha moment, saying, oh yeah. Uh, or sometimes people gradually, um, you know, grow into learning, uh, liking sake. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a different story for different people. I tried the Dewazakura Omachi. Mm. That was the moment that right. I thought. Because I was 50-50 at the time. Mm -hmm. I liked the wine and I liked the sake. But the other, when I tried it, there was a kuraomachi. It was like, wow, okay. Yeah, there's a kuraomachi. It's, it's amazing sake. It's beautiful. I know Tedorigawa yeah. is the today's topic. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> he studied uh, the how to brew sake in Dewazakura for two years. Oh, like the owner, the current owner of the mm. Tedorigawa. Okay. So okay. So I think he will be okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, probably we just moved to uh, the brewery we're going to talk about, and it, it's Tidorigawa, mm. uh, Sake Brewery. Um, is it from, I think it's from Ishikawa Prefecture, right? Yes. Correct. Yeah. So uh, it's it's not very old brewery. I mean, compared to some breweries which were probably set up in sixteen hundreds or something, this one was uh, eighteen seventy. Oh, so they just celebrated hundred fiftieth anniversary, yeah. which is uh, quite common uh, years of mm. the establishment. So in among other breweries. So when you decide what, uh, I guess the, the, the whole company probably decide what breweries you're going to work with. So how you pick up the breweries? Is it pick up in, in your main office and then you just work with them? Or you've got some kind of um, saying here, so you would like to, to work with some particular brewery. How does it work? So our company actually started by the, uh, the Chris Pierce who is located in uh, Hawaii. <laughs> the, <Nice>. the heaven. <laughs> and then uh, uh, he is the one uh, start uh, decides li literally. However, uh, we have uh, six main breweries. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are the one that are core of our brewery. 
And then after that, we gradually uh, increased to 12 sake breweries. But uh, uh, we are very important. We believe that um, those brewery has similar concept of uh, brewing. So uh, each one of our breweries is completely different. Mm. However, they have a kind of similarity of they wanted to make good sake. Mm. So, uh, and then they are not only about making good sake, but also investing. So mm-hmm. they don't, they're not really flashy about other, their own um, wealth. More, mm-hmm. they put a lot of investment into uh, the making good sake. So uh, those six breweries, so for example, Masumi, Koshino Kanbai, um, the Kamoizumi, those are the, our key uh, breweries. And then they introduce us to other breweries. And then uh, uh, the, we taste it, of course. And if that sake is good, then we uh, bring in. Uh, however, it's uh, always some kind of relationship and connection and feeling towards with the brewery is more important mm. than uh, also the Taste is very, very important. Yeah. But uh, uh, then how they are trendy or very fashionable, those kind of uh, elements are not really that important to us. Mm-hmm. So what's more important is the uh, the their philosophy of the sake making as well as the taste of the sake. Okay. So have you visited uh, to the Rigawa? Yes. So how was it? Amazing, yes. <laughs> um, so the, they are located in the uh, Ishikawa prefecture, but really close to Kanazawa city. Mm-hmm. And the Kanazawa city is, um, they call it small Kyoto. So when you go to visit the Kanazawa, it's very elegant. Mm-hmm. Uh, beautiful buildings, old Japanese buildings. And uh, they have... Uh, Pine tree, oh, yeah. the pine tree, the big pine tree, which uh, the you know the they have the rope going on the top to the bottom, so that mm-hmm. the, even though the snow uh, falls, ah. it stays. Oh, okay. so, like you're talking about. Yeah, but it's everywhere in the, yeah, 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 you, yeah. But a particular one that people go to see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 you see yeah. it there too. So mm-hmm. anyway, Yukizuri is the um, the rope going mm-hmm. towards to the uh, the top to the bottom mm-hmm. of the vine, and mm-hmm. so that the snow uh, will not break down the tree branch. Oh, I see. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's everywhere around the area. And when I visited them, it's always the winter time, mm-hmm. and. I see these very elegant uh, pine trees everywhere in their house. Mm. And it's just a regular common house. It's not like a little yeah. beautiful park or anything like that. But you see there is more um, elegance and wealth mm. in that country. And Kanazawa is famous for the wealth mm. uh, because they can harvest an enormous amount of uh, uh, rice as well as the shogun they had was very strong so mm-hmm. historically the area is uh, quite wealthy. Mm-hmm. Um, Tedorigawa is very elegant style sake mm-hmm. so I think it coming from that Kanazawa um, culture and history. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, Tedorigawa sake, um, so apart from elegant what is the in your opinion the main Key, key points of this sake which makes it different from, from the other breweries? So there is a two points really. Mm. So one is the Yamaha. Mm. Uh, Yamaha is not unique to uh, only to Tedorigawa, but it's unique to Ishikawa Prefecture, especially mm. this Noto area, Noto Peninsula area uh, breweries. Um, Yamaha Mesot. Mm-hmm. A lot of people yeah. may know yeah, already. Yeah. yeah. So the other uh, one of the reason they make Yamaha method there is that water is hard. Mm-hmm. So the uh, they are getting water from Haksan Mountain. 
Mm-hmm. Haksan, San is already mountain, so mm-hmm. Haksan mountain, mountain, right? <laughs> But anyway, so the other,、uh, we call it silver mountain in Japan,、uh, mm-hmm. in English.、Mm-hmm. And that silver mountain to WRA,、uh, it takes about 100 years to bring the, the water they、wow. are using. <laughs> so it's, it's coming from the top. To the bottom, yeah, after the、oh, rain goes、oh, down、yeah. and then the underground the river the travels through the underground the river、oh, wow. and it takes 100 years. <laughs> yes. So, those t i m e、uh, a lot of minerals,、uh, magnesium and calcium, will be connect- collected.、Mm-hmm. Therefore, the water will be harder. And when you're making sake with harder water, the sake becomes a little bit more drier,、uh, quite stiff. Mm. Um, and、uh, to avoid the, and also the bitterness.、Mm. The bitterness is the more problem than making harder because the minerals are good、uh, nutrition for the yeast to、uh, produce alcohol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when they're producing alcohol too fast, then the sake will become a little bit more drier、mm-hmm. and tough. So, this to cut the edge of the、um, roughness or、uh, stiff or mm-hmm. bitterness, mm-hmm.、Uh, using Yamaha was the best way to、uh, hide as well as to create complexity instead of、uh, having fault.、Mm. So, then they start making Yamaha method.、Uh, Brewing around the whole area of Ishikawa Prefecture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And、uh, Tedorigawa is one of the breweries, of course. So, the producing、um, Yamaha method will bring more complexity instead of just the bitterness.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, Tedorigawa is as well making really excellent、uh, Yamaha sake. However, Tedorigawa Yamaha sake is a lot more clean. Mm. And、uh, lighter compared to other,、mm-hmm. like Tengumai, Kikuhime, they are very strong Yamaha characters.、Mm. Sometimes you feel a bit more pickle or quite oody, earthy、mm. note. The Tedorigawa has an oody, earthy note, but more on the white birch side rather than the、um, oak or A very dark wood.、Mm-hmm. So, much more clean cedar, or sometimes you smell more、um, hinoki wood,、mm-hmm. uh, very elegant、mm-hmm. uh, style、um, taste will、mm-hmm. be found in、uh, Yamaha. Okay.、Mm-hmm. okay. And、um, you, you met the Toju. Yes. So, what is he like? So,、uh, current ones,、mm-hmm. uh, I met、uh, two brewmasters,、mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, the previous one, he's、uh, a bit older, <laughs> and then the、uh, current one is only about 35, 36, something、mm-hmm. like that.、Um, and he was here in London.、Oh. Yes. So, after he、uh, graduated the、uh, no- Japanese agricultural, that's the only sake university in mm. Japan. Mm-hmm.、Uh, and、uh, he studied or internshiped at、mm-hmm. the other, the Dewazakura for two years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I heard that the, he lost some weight, and then because it's like an army there,、mm-hmm. <laughs> you really have to have a Uh, walk hard mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they have to carry rice and so on, anyway.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, after the hardship of walking, he came to、uh, UK and、okay. studied English、right. and, of course, the global market.、Mm-hmm. And he was in Brighton, and、uh, after the, he, his studying of six months or so,、mm-hmm. uh, he came to London and then he was here for three, four months to sell sake. Mm-hmm. As well. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> very bright man, very、mm-hmm. uh, enthusiastic,、uh, but very nice,、mm-hmm. good,、uh, proper person.、Mm-hmm. So,、uh, yeah, we really love his uh, uh, work and how he e n j o y talking to him and so、mm-hmm. on. So,、mm-hmm. uh, and he has a great passion towards sake too.、Mm-hmm. So、the, his brewery is not that big. Mm-hmm. So, he could do so much things、uh, with his、um, idea.、Mm. So,、uh, 
I think he wanted to collect as much as his uh, possible while he was in uh, freedom. Because hmm. once he's go back to brewery, it would be very difficult to just be freedom yeah, and yeah, do yeah. whatever he wants to do. So, okay. yeah. yeah. Do you know a bit um, about the history of the brewery? I mean, in terms of like, if you look at some of the breweries, like if you look at like Asaki Brewery, which made Dasai. So it used to be a brewery which was making some very basic jizake uh, and, and then uh, the new owner came in, I think in the 80s or end of 70s, beginning of 80s and he decided, okay, we'll, we'll, we're going to do on the Junmai Daiginjo. So it was a big change. Uh, do you know anything about Tsidorigawa? Did they also move from being like local brewery to something or so Tedorigawa has always been the local as well as they had some uh, like Yoshidagura mm-hmm. and Tedorigawa the brewery is the its name is uh, Yoshida Brewery not oh. the Tedorigawa Brewery mm. so Yoshida Brewery is uh, having two or three brand and then uh, uh, one of the brand is uh, no longer uh, mm-hmm. using and then uh, Yoshidagura and then uh, Tedorigawa survived mm-hmm. so and then they had a, a fire so Showa 27 okay so, so you have to calculate yeah. sometimes <laughs> <laughs> Showa 27 they had the uh, fire and then they the whole brewery was shut down oh. yeah, so okay. they had to uh, um Recently, they finally uh, pay all the debt. Mm-hmm. So, uh, two years before they're celebrating 150th year, uh, year anniversary, they finally paid off all the debt from mm. that fire wow. they had. Uh, so, yeah, they were a long struggle, mm-hmm. uh, but um, I think the Tedorigawa was always kind of connoisseurs sake. Mm. So they are not only selling uh, sake locally, but in Tokyo, but Tokyo people who are, who loves about sake, mm. who knows about sake, or always, oh, you have a Tedorigawa, mm. this restaurant must be a good restaurant. Mm. <laughs> that kind of like a status mm. of knowing Tedorigawa is cool. I think it's still going like that with the Tedorigawa sake. They're not like the Dasai, you know, you can see it everywhere. Mm-hmm. But when you see it, you get your heart up, mm-hmm. you know, very see, exciting. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the more connoisseur uh, type of sake is Tedorigawa. Okay, yeah, yeah that's pretty cool. So what, what, what do your customers say about Tedorigawa? What do they like, what they excited about because obviously you got some feedback from I guess from restaurants from shops probably from obviously people who just drink the regalo what, what do they say about it do you have any kind of um I, don't, I think they'll be what maybe positive feedback most of the mm. time and uh, as Asami mentioned that uh, the Yamaha style is not too heavy it's such delicate and elegant style Yamaha so it can actually go well so many different dishes so it, it won't choose the food, you have to eat mm-hmm. this particular food, this particular sake. They're more like, you know, the good side after actress kind of thing. So okay. just the support the main after main actress, which is the food. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we do get the really good positive feedback and then uh, the Tudorigawa sake can sort of go well along I with uh, the wide range of dishes. Okay. And uh, I think people love the story. Well, yeah. Tedorigawa's story, mm-hmm. Tedorigawa mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. actual name of the river. Oh, mm-hmm. in the run in the Ishika prefecture. So, as you might know, right, but yeah. uh, the term is hand, total totally is a take and a hold yeah. and a cover. So, hand holding river, originally back in like battle time. Um, so, that was the time, you know, that all the um, warrior holding hand together to cross the river mm-hmm. because there's no good. Bridge. Or family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But now you can use because also the sake exists for the celebration, right? So that the, the sake use a lot at wedding. Mm. So hand holding 
you know, let's oh. get together mm-hmm. and then United. Go, yeah. So it needs to be good. Well, that's yeah. also yeah. get a good feedback as well. Because yeah. they couldn't cross the river by boat mm-hmm. uh, because of the current was oh, very strong. strong. Okay. So you will be, you know, thrown away. <laughs> and uh, uh, so they had to hold hand together to cross oh, the so river. They, somebody, they, yeah, ten, oh. 10 people, maybe 20 people wow. just cross the river. But once you let go your hand to other ones, <laughs> you, know, you know, might have a, some kind of disaster yeah. or you might have scar to your life. So okay. yes. uh, you really have to keep your hands mm-hmm. tight together to cross the river. So that make it more for celebration to mm. wedding. Yeah, yeah, it's a very nice story. Yeah, yes. uh, I didn't know about this story. Mm, beautiful, no? Mm, yeah. So mm-hmm. way before the bridge was established. Okay. So that was the time. That yeah. was. Okay, now we're moving to a tasting section. So you will have three sake of the episode instead of just one. We probably should move to try sake and talk about yeah. to the rawa ah, sake. Yeah. Shall we bring the sake? Yeah. yeah. Yes. The Tirugawa sake normally is dry sake. Mm. So that's what people like to have. Uh, mm-hmm. You might find some sweetness into the sake, but still uh, for the overall uh, drier style sake is found in uh, mm-hmm. Tidorigawa. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're going to taste three sake mm-hmm. today and we're going to start from you. Um, so this is a little newer items to us compared to the others mm-hmm. as some of the core breweries items we've been having for a long, long time. Yeah. Uh, so this is the um, you and it is as the um, little bit of lower alcohol percentage sake. It's only 13% which is lower than normal mm-hmm. sort of the average sake alcohol percentage and this is actually Mr. Yoshida so the current younger generation he created he put so much idea on it to appeal younger generation Mm-hmm-hmm. You know, to enjoy the sake, hence that the lower the alcohol and then the flavor profile, it's going to be really fruity, uh, pink grapefruity sort of the character. Mm-hmm. Mm. Nice, no? Yeah. So I it's a bit like a bit jammy. It's a sort of fruit. It's, it's a very concentrated fruit. Mm. Mm. It's even though it's Jumai, he yeah. created this uh, quite fruity note. Yeah, uh, it's like a modern Jumai, would say. Yeah, very much. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but quite soothing as well at the same mm-hmm. time. Yeah. So even though he has a lot of fruits, but it's not um, heavily sweet. Yeah, with like plums and mm. um, some like a dry fruit and. Uh, because it's only, it's only sort of like heavy fruit sort of side. Mm-hmm. It's, it's quite sweet. It's, um, it's acidic and sweet, which is yeah. mm-hmm. very nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, this is the polishing ratio, probably mm-hmm. some of the, the listeners should, might know a lot about mm-hmm. it, yeah, yeah. all the specification. So this is a 60%. Uh, so for the Jumai, mm-hmm. that's quite high polishing. Yeah, things. yeah. And then that that's why maybe you can tell a little bit lighter yeah. compared to the typical so the Jumai mm. standard. But you tasted the little bitterness at the end, no? The it's not um, long lingering sweet stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice sort of like a bit of finish. Right? Yeah, like a good, like a, a bit yeah. of astringency yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that's the kind of character of the the. Tidurigawa. Mm. I think the water uh, is a little tight, harder, making mm-hmm. that um, kind of clean, dry finish. And this is Yamaha as well. Mm-hmm. 
So judging by citizens. Yeah. So the Yamaha as well, normally it has the clean uh, cut finish, and that's the one of the character. And uh, uh, this Ishikawa Prefecture is uh, located by the sea, mm -hmm. so they eat a lot of seafood. Mm -hmm. And normally when you eat seafood, you want to have a different kind of fish. Oh, yeah. At the same time, you're not mm -hmm. going to have a tuna for, you know, 20 pieces. <laughs> you will have 20 pieces of sashimi. Yeah. However, you might have maybe 10 different kinds. Yeah. And when you have 10 different kinds, you want to clean up your palate mm -hmm. before you move on, on to different fish. Mm -hmm. So having this kind of uh, clean, dry finish is perfect to clean your palate and mm -hmm. then move on to another fish mm -hmm. and then clean your palate yeah. and another finish so it's not really short finish you will have a nice beautiful lens so mm -hmm. you will enjoy the fish mm -hmm. however when you want to finish it will be finished so oh, um to me tetorigawa sake is always the fish uh, mm. uh friendly sake mm. it won't give you any fishiness you just mm -hmm. get, get the beautiful uh, freshness at the end. Mm. Um, I'm sorry we didn't bring the fish today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wish we did. <laughs> Beautiful Next sashimi time. plate. <laughs> Not a good <girl. laughs> mm. But this nice light uh, sake is very suitable for mm. a lot of people who never yeah. had sake. Yeah, yeah, mm. definitely. It's, mm. uh, it's quite friendly sake, I would say. Yeah. Very sort of. Um, enticing and sort of inviting, I would say, mm. to give you this kind of... Mm. So, do you recommend it um, to drink um, uh, like chilled? Yes, this is a recommended sour chilled mm. and you can enjoy the most of it, all the freshness mm. and the fruitiness mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And then you might taste a little bit of a tiny, tiny bubble sort of... Fits. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's, yeah. it's, a, it's not as strong as the face, but it's more mm. like a you know gentle... Yeah. Sort of bubbliness. That's also the freshness as well. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. also can be enjoyed when you serve this one particularly cold. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is coming from the special uh, bottling. So mm -hmm. soon after the sake is made, normally there is a lot of bubble still. Even though the sake is pressed, yeah. still yeah. the bubble is going. Yeah. So uh, he bottles soon after the sake is made. Well, not soon, but maybe two weeks after. I see. Still, the bubble is mm -hmm. going. Uh, that's CO two. The making uh, um, um, oxidation to mm -hmm. reduce so they bottle it so it won't get any um, the CO2 going into the bottle so mm -hmm. that it would keep the freshness nicely okay. that's why you feel the spits splits a little mm. bit yeah, but, yeah. Um, it's, it's nice way. it's yeah. very sort of nice and, uh, mm. and, yeah. okay before we try two other Tidorigawa sake, alas, only virtually, my dear listeners, let me remind you about London Sake, our sponsor, and their huge selection of curated sake sets, including a Tidorigawa one, which provide a great opportunity to explore various styles and types of sake. Have a look, but don't forget about the magic word SUGIDAMA, all caps, to get your 10% discount. Shall we go to the, the next one? Yes. Next sake. So we're going to have uh, Yamaha Junmai. Mm -hmm. My favorite one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So as the name said, this is Yamaha Junmai, uh, so the Junmai Sake are uh, made with the Yamaha Methyl. Mm -hmm. So compared to the first one that you, uh, this is definitely you can expect more sort of the savoury, a little bit of the richness, full body, mm -hmm. sort of the style of the Junmai. And uh, in terms of the note, um, we normally feel a bit of a banana, more like a ripened fruit, yeah. instead of, because the first one you, we talked about you know, the pink grapefruits, a little bit more like a really fresh, a little bit of an acidic side of yeah. the fruit, but this is more like a ripened, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. type of the fruit. A uh, little bit of um, uh, the daily, almost mm -hmm. like a yogurt, a yeah. um, little bit milky things as well. 
And the alcohol percentage for um, this one is a 15%. Mm. So this is more like the what you expect to the sake yeah. you find either the shop or the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So the 15% of alcohol. Uh, in terms of the polishing ratio, this is 60%. So mm. again, they polish quite a lot and then high yeah. for the Junmai style sake. Mm -hmm. For the, the rice wise, so they, they use the uh, Yamada Nishiki mm -hmm. and 500 mangoku, 500 mangoku, and uh, all together. Okay, so they, they mix it or they. Mm. And 500 mangoku is famous in the uh, region. Yeah. So, yeah. as you probably mentioned already, Fukui Ishikawa, that's the 500 yeah, mangoku, yeah. home of the 500 mangoku, Niigata. Yeah. It's got like, um, it's also very, quite concentrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and as you said, it more ripened than uh, the previous one. Mm. And then acidity is much sort of the milder and the taste, and then it's a little bit rounder compared mm. to the yeah. first one. It's much softer, but also savory compared yeah. to the previous mm. one. You can get a bit of a complexity. This mm. is more, much more like a long finish. Mm. You know, cling in your mouth for a long mm. time. And uh, you can, so this one, this sake always make me feel like I want to eat some nice mm. food in a really yeah. umami rich food. Yeah. But do you see the kind of uh, hinoki ut, like udi mm. note as well? Mm. The um, making, yeah, you get the banana as well as the hinoki mm. ut and then the uh, arsi note, a lot of complexity, yogurt yeah, aromas, yeah. And, uh, and then the more you drink, the more aroma and taste mm. changes yeah, by yeah. the different temperature. We yeah. intentionally made this sake not in, put it in the refrigerator, so at this moment you'll be tasting probably around um, 12, 13 mm. degree, maybe mm. a little bit higher, and even though you bring it even higher, mm. it would create much more creamy character as well mm. as more complexity on the, mm. the flavor and taste. So it would be very nice to have. Mm. And then also now we are in, we are almost end of October. Mm. Mm. So finally it's getting a little bit chilly. Mm. Mm. So this is absolutely amazing sake to enjoy warm mm. as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, must be very nice. Mm. But you, you see that you still have the bitterness at the end, yeah. no? So let's try the salt. Mm. Can I give you salt on your hand? Yeah. And then uh, you can just uh, have it. Uh, I know this one is a little fresh. Just tiny bit of salt on your mm. tongue. And then, uh, and then try it. <laughs> yeah, it's such a different experience. Mm. You don't have like a, the, the bitterness is uh, it's much lower. Mm. Much mm. more creamy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think enhance the umami a lot mm. more than the uh, bitterness. So mm. to me, the sake, it's bitterness, mm -hmm. um, unavoidable, especially with harder water brewery. Uh, but bitterness is not always negative. Mm. It's actually a good thing, yeah. uh, especially like a big coffee mm. or yeah. beer yeah. without bitterness. Yeah. It's really not that interesting. And so as sake. Mm. And when you eat or something having a little salty stuff, mm. uh, it just brings uh, adding another level of the taste, uh, creating three dimensions mm. of the taste. Yeah. So um, maybe by itself, yeah. some people might be like, oh, this is just a bitter. Mm. But when you're having food, this is yeah. the bottle, you will finish it mm. right away. Yeah. So. so do you recommend it also with the seafood? Seafood, that's that's for sure. But you can think of this one as slightly you know, heavier mm. compared to the first one because that yeah. is more, more likely, you know, sashimi prata, that, uh, you know, that you mentioned. But this one, you can take mm. a little bit more cooked mm. food and then also ingredients, even either fish or meat, mm -hmm. you know, you can think about a little bit puttier. Mm. a little bit more like a dense or sort of yeah. like heaviness of the dish, you know, as it is. And then also tiny bit of a spice, mm. it can take, it can hold it nicely. Yeah. It will not conflict each other. Okay. It's more like enhancing the, the umami and the flavor, but round it up sort of the spice side as mm. well. So it's not just for Japanese food, even no. like a grill, charcoal grill, mm. some even like a Mediterranean or sort of a little bit about barbecue thing as well. 
you can actually enjoy this service so many different ways. Yes. Turkish. Yeah, oh, that yeah. is really must good. Must be very yeah. good with Turkish, yeah. Because it's, it's very versatile, because obviously it's you can have it at different temperature, with a, a lot of different foods, and uh, I guess for different occasions, because, yeah, I mean, it's it's probably more full, food sakir than to, to drink on its own, but you still can have a bit of it as a aperitif, why not? Yeah. It's, it's nice and um, when it's chilled especially, you know? yeah. and then you can have it with food warmed up and people will, won't believe that it's different, uh, the same yeah. sake. Yeah. They say, yeah, it's a different sake. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, you can play this trick with people and they will definitely. Yeah, this one is different. You don't need an ice bucket. Just, yeah. just take it out yeah. and keep it in the fridge to keep the good condition and the quality. Yeah, yeah. However, once you take it out, enjoy the first class cold, mm. but leave it on the table, let it to go up to the temperature and eventually as your food goes to the heavier or richer, yeah. Then you warm it up so that you can exactly yourself. You can enjoy the one bottle with so mm. many different tastes and so many different yeah. ways. Yeah, it's amazing. And one more thing, the pizza. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, we did a pizza. The this p- one, yeah. pizza and this one oh, is amazing. Yeah, so yeah. must try this because one. pizza is salty. Yeah, and then also the charcoal, the yeah, grill. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. little bit of a not burnt, but nice yeah, yeah, crispy yeah. sort yeah. of end with the. Normally the pizza also have a so- softer, sort of the milder flavor of the cheese, mm-hmm. not like super funky. No, or not no. so, some some cheese, you know, some pizza has a grilled cheese, but that's a little bit of you know yeah. an extra way, you know, different way. So that milder cheese and that saltiness and a little bit of a cooked burn side, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. delicious. And then a little bit of basil or something mm-hmm. like that, yeah. and this one, yeah. so good. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Sake. Yeah, this is one of the classic Tedorigawa sake. Mm. So um, they have a lot of newer ones, like uh, the first one you tasted, it's quite new. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, because he's young, he wants to try many things. But the other, this is the one he kept as the traditional style. Mm. And I think one of the my. Mm. Do, do you know it's in Ishikawa Prefecture? Do they have uh, any kind of style, common style in there, like, like Niigata for example, Niigata is like, it's usually light and dry, or it's because a lot of prefectures, they don't have a style, they just, different breweries make yeah. different type of sake. So Ishikawa is famous for Yamahai, mm. so uh, different types of Yamahai is produced, mm. so uh, Yamaha normally has um, this kind of yogurt, higher yeah. in acidity and higher in amino acid mm-hmm. and quite uh, rich and full character. Um, even though Tedorigawa is very light style Yamaha, but mm-hmm. the, uh, I think many of the other um, sake, like Niigata sake, compared to Niigata sake, I think Tedorigawa has a lot of uh, flavor and mm. full taste, even dry. It has much more complexity and uh, uh, flavorful mm-hmm. uh, character. So I think the Ishikawa is similar to that. And of course, very dry, kind of bitter taste is mm. Ishikawa mm. prefectures. Well. Sake, mm. Because it's, it's a quite very sort of approachable type of Yamaha. Mm. Because Sometimes Yamaha could be, as you mentioned at the beginning, overpowering. Pico. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this one is very elegant, but you still got all the acidity, all the complexity, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Tedrigo is quite unique for the, mm. the elegant style of Yamaha. So, we're going to do the next sake, which is the next one. Mm-hmm. So, next one is unique. This is not the name of the sake. <laughs> this is a unique style of the sake. This is called Kinka. And this is Daiginjo. So most of you know the people listening to this uh, know what study Daiginjo. So we're not gonna go we're not gonna go into detail for that part. But the specific one we needed to mention about this sake is Nama. Mm-hmm. So Nama means unpasteurized. Nama literally means a Japanese language point to be that's uncooked or raw. Mm-hmm. So hence the unpasteurized sake. It's definitely have uh, unpasteurized sake yeah. aroma yeah. than yeah. you actually. Yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. completely different flavor profile from because the, the previous two, although they're different, the flavor profile on the same sort of 
this is the same sort of area. Mm. This one is completely different. Yeah, and then surprisingly, they use the house yeast for mm. everyone, every sake. So the second one and third one is using uh, pretty much. Uh, same ingredients. Mm. Polishing ratio is different, but the other uh, they're using Yamada Nishiki and ah, this one is Shikawamo. And then uh, uh, so the rice is a bit similar, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then the yeast is uh, same, mm. but they can create such a unique difference. But yeah. this one is Nama, as uh, Masayo said, mm-hmm. but it's been aged for one year. Oh. That's why you will get kind of uh, um, slightly like uh, um, caramel, the salted caramel, kind of. Mm, yeah. But to me, more pear. Um, like a yeah. stewed pear. Stewed pear, yeah. yeah, with the little caramel yeah. or like poached character. And it's a bit like a mineral too as well, mm-hmm. sort of like a stone. And mm-hmm. like chalky. Yeah, yeah, chalky. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. Mm. You can feel that sort of like a vicious, mm. you know, vivid style yeah. from the nama, the particular yeah. nama kind of style. Mm. Um, but in the body wise, it's it is elegant, mm. and yeah. then it's lighter for the especially that coming also from the polishing ratio of forty five percent. So now we polish more than a half of the mm. rice yeah. away, so that remaining is only forty five percent. Alcohol percentage point to view, this is slightly higher than the second one. Mm. This is 16, it's only 1% different. Yeah. But yeah, this is again sort of the average sake alcohol, yeah. so 15 16%. Normally, namazake has higher alcohol to mm. uh, prevent going yeah. uh, bad or damaging the sake. So It's very strong. Dairy sort of cheesy taste. Mm-hmm. You can, especially after taste, you can feel mm-hmm. and taste the cheese and sort of like the dairy or something. Mm-hmm. Quite quite nice. Mm-hmm. This yeah. hard cheese like um, parmesan or something. Yeah, yeah. Umami. Yeah, very umami rich. Yeah. But it's all like come together really nicely. Like yeah. it, it, not, none of the parts is overpowering each yeah. other. It's come together really nicely with the sort of um, the fruitiness as well. So mm-hmm. this one goes really well with the seafood, especially with a little bit of sweetness, mm. you know, with its own sort of original flavor. So just an example of not the sea ring, but like scallop, mm. you know, like a shellfish, yeah. like a sweet prawns or, you know, mirugai, all the sort of this shellfish as well. It has more high in the acid, acid, amino acid, so high in umami, but then sweetness coming from, the natural sweetness coming from yeah. the actual seafood, it worked almost mm. perfectly, much made in heaven. Because kink is, it's quite sweet, right? Yeah. I mean, it's nama it's and also, yeah, yeah. and well, it's like in Yeah, yeah. And aged. Yeah, because I remember I first tried it probably a few years ago, and I was like, oh, it's so sweet. I think it probably was a, some kind of situation when you try several sake and probably they were dry and then you try it and you say, oh, it's so sweet, it's like a liquor, it's in, in a way. <laughs> yeah. But also maybe the temperature, if the sake temperature mm. is uh, warmer, then mm. you might feel a yeah. lot sweeter. Yeah. And then yeah. uh, you smell more, much more salted caramel mm. um, yeah. when the temperature goes a little bit uh, warmer like room temperature or something like that. And also, because it's, this is Nama, mm-hmm. when you're drinking this one is important in terms of the season. So mm-hmm. if you, like I think the current one is probably the sweetest time of the... So this one is left sake uh, brewery 2021 December. Mm-hmm. So possibly they made that year in September. Mm-hmm. No, possibly. No, possibly. Mm. <laughs> but most likely. Just about. Yes, yeah, so yeah. so could be. Yeah. yeah. So could it be this one is two years old. Mm. Yeah. Uh-huh. But if it becomes three years old, yeah. then it gets even sweeter. Mm. So you might taste it that then. Yeah. So um, a lot of pasteurized sake doesn't change as much as unpasteurized ones. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but unpasteurized one. 
uh, when you look at the, the bottling day, or I don't like to call it bottling day, but the production left the brewery yeah. date, then the, you can actually uh, taste quite a, a bit different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most of people wouldn't notice, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, you will probably, <laughs> and we will definitely yeah, yeah. taste it. Oh, no, this batch is a little bit sweeter, mm-hmm. or this batch yeah. is... It's, the difference is very slight, but still. Yeah, yeah. it's very sort of tiny difference, but mm. you can obviously tell, because you sometimes, I've, I've had probably kinko two or three times, and uh, every time it tastes it's slightly different. Yeah. yeah. And it happens a lot in Nama, mm-hmm. and that's I think one of the interest, fun yeah. things to yeah, do. You know, story, right? yeah. So yeah. the different is very slight, so it's mm-hmm. not going to be like completely different. Yeah, it's just like yeah. oh, a little bit sweeter than last time I tasted, a little bit drier or a little mm-hmm. bit more, you know, richer or something like that. So mm-hmm. it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah. So it's quite quite interesting to to compare three different. Sake from the same brewery, and uh, two of them are Junmai and uh, one of them Daiginjo. And uh, you can, they're all different, but you still kind of like I feel some kind of common theme, right, coming through in terms of like um, probably acidity because acidity is slightly higher than usual sake, and um, obviously Nama is different from. Pasteurized sake, but you still got like a, this um, acidity and sweetness, and uh, some of the fresh, some of them, the first one. Um, I think the second one is definitely it's great food sake, and uh, I think kinka as well is a very good food mm-hmm. sake. You can, I think, I would probably have it not only with the seafood, but um, with some kind of even with uh, like a you know, like a stew, because uh, it's a richness mm-hmm. of the stew, and it's like a sweetness, because some stews are good, like the sweetness probably from tomato or something. Uh, and then you, I think it, it's very good sort of uh, combination. Definitely, uh, and it's good for Christmas probably. Because mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bottle looks very Christmassy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the flower of uh, plum, mm. and the plum flower is the, the national flower, uh, the regional flower in Kanazawa. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, the gold is uh, Kanazawa is, uh, produces ninety eight percent of the gold leaves. Oh. You know those gold leaves you use for co- uh, mm. cooking oh, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, or like we, if you have a beautiful lacquerware of mm. the sake cup, mm-hmm. and there is a li- uh, little gold. Uh, mm. Petals is showcasing, and that is produced in the Kanazawa. Oh. Mm. So it's uh, the bottle is showcasing that mm. gold and then the plum flower. Oh. Pretty. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, you. I think you can have it with the stew or uh, Sunday roast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very good for the. Well, yeah. some people maybe after meal, digestive, mm. or yeah. also even aperitif. So it works so many different yeah, ways. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's it's very. Again, it's a very versatile sake, and uh, because I mean, there are people who prefer sweeter drinks, and uh, so it will work for them perfectly, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah. and it's still got enough acidity, so it's not like sweet, sweet. It's mm. nice and yeah, so. well balanced. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sake, 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 dama, um, yeah, it's, it's so cool. Yeah, it's a three sake we tried, and uh, it's amazing brand and uh, amazing brewery. Um, so, what do you think? Um, are you going to bring more sake from this brewery, or um, what your what plans do you have? In Plan with the Tedorigawa. Te yeah. At this moment, the this you mm-hmm. uh, took us about two years right. to bringing in, yeah. and it just arrived mm-hmm. about when a month ago, something like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, we wanted to introduce more of this Tedorigawa you mm-hmm. unique. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the creation of the yes, the current owner. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we wanted to everybody to know more about his. This yeah, particular yeah. sake, uh, it's a brand new in the UK market. Mm. So you mentioned this um, uh, 
plant flowers, right? And uh, but we didn't mention the labels, which are quite different. They're, they're all beautiful, but because the the second one is very traditional, yes. it's like a very traditional. It uh, says Tedorigawa yeah. in kanji character, mm. and in the yeah, on the right Yamaha and Junmai in the Japanese kanji letters. And on the back, you've got this kind of onsen or something called. Sake making from oh, sake making. I think, yeah, sake making from like a, a old period, period mm. sort of. And uh, the U is definitely gives you this feel of freshness because it's almost abstract, but it's uh, it's like branches of um, I think of the tree with probably some flowers and leaves, right? It's actually rice. rice. Oh, rice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So this is the uh, the rice um, when they're um, uh, ready to harvest. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like that, just falling, um, hmm. the top is for uh, just bending okay. over. Okay. And then yeah. uh, um, we, we say the uh, don't be so elegant. Mm. Just always have the head down oh, right. to be humble. Yes, mm. be humble. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I think it's showcasing that as well as the harvest. Mm. And then this is done by the uh, the young uh, artist, mm -hmm. uh, friend of the current owner. Mm. So uh, it's the looks a very abstract painting. But yeah. you look, it if has you know the, what it is. Yeah, <laughs> But if you don't, yeah. yeah, I think it conveys the freshness and uh, the character of this sake very well. Yeah, you can look at this bottle and think, okay, this sake must be fresh and nice, and mm -hmm. sort of deep. Right? And it has this, a young energy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Color wise, nice and bright. Yeah, 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 exactly. And this one is more traditional, probably. Yeah, my, my. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, Kinka yeah. is. I quite like the label. On the one, it's, it's a bit strict because it's a black background with white and uh, golden uh, uh, flowers. But on the other hand, it's, I think it's very arty in a way. It's, it's, in a way, it's, it's like a conceptual. It's mm. like, you know, conceptual art, like a problem, I don't know, like a, a Kandinsky or some yeah. sort of like a, a 30s or 20s, uh, uh, 1930s, uh, 20s, 1930s uh, art. So it's... Um, or some kind of, uh, you know, like abstract sort of, yeah. He would be happy yeah. to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You also have to sleep. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So, oh, very sleep. Nice. And, yeah, this is done by the our designer. Oh, really? So this is uh, uh, not available in Japan. Okay. It's only available in through our company. Okay, so um, people are... Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, one of the reasons is that this sake uh, was not intentionally, actually, accidentally aged in our uh, warehouse mm. uh, for one year. Okay. And uh, we had a, we had to face that we have to throw those bottles away, yeah. or we taste it, mm. right? And then so we taste it, and then we found that it was beautiful. Mm. It was actually much better mm. than the fresh ones. Mm. So uh, we used to sell it as the arabashiri, mm. which is the um, spring season yeah. sake. So once the season is done, then we can't, we were not able to sell. But the, uh, the tedorigawa arabashiri, which is the freshly pressed sake, was a bit tight. As mm. I said, the, the water is harder, so the sake is normally it doesn't bring up the uh, rich uh, aroma um, right away. Soon after you press, it won't happen. Like masumi is mm. easy because water is so soft. Yeah. When you press, the taste is amazing already. Yeah. But the water is hard and the sake will be... Uh, it takes time to be more mild. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we had, a, uh, we had a little struggle mm. of selling the arabashiri mm. from yeah. Tedorigawa because it was yeah. too light and mm. too dry and then uh, a bit stiff. Mm -hmm. uh, so after one year, we tasted it. We were like, oh, this is much mm. better <laughs> than the uh, uh, fresh ones. Yeah. And we started selling and it was received so beautifully. Mm. And we decided to make it to product. Okay. So that's that's why it's uh, designed by Warsaki Imports. Yeah. We have a few products that uh, designed by us, mm. but um, 
uh, no huge amount, but mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. We, we wanted to keep their tradition, their ideas, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, we know what market want, mm -hmm. and we would create yeah. our um, product for our customer. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what we do. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah, and I anything you want to. Yeah. Thank you. I forgot to mention about the other uh, uh, sustainability. Yeah. So the uh, the Tedorigawa is putting a lot of effort for uh, sustainable. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing is the energy. So uh, they are trying to, or I think they achieved, uh, nearly hundred percent of their uh, electricity is um, using uh, sustainable. So mm -hmm. soda or the um, the ground. Mm. The you know the heating, heating yeah. from okay. the ground, yeah. and then uh, uh, or solar panel. Mm. So uh, and then wind okay, as well. Yeah. So and also they're trying to use their rice near mm. their brewery. So if you visit the brewery someday, mm -hmm. please yeah. do. Uh, you s all you see is rice field. Really long way to go to see so many beautiful mm -hmm. rice field, but they don't use the. Uh, rice uh, at the time, but before mm -hmm. they were using the buying the rice from different regions or different mm -hmm. area. So uh, they decided to buy rice from the area, mm -hmm. but they're only making uh, eating rice, not the sake rice. Mm -hmm. So they had to change the complete, oh, you know, yeah. it's the sake rice and eating rice is. Uh, um, it's even though it's Japanese rice, it's completely different style mm -hmm. of the farming. Yeah. So you have to really change a lot. It's not going to change in a year or two. It would be like five years time, uh, term mm -hmm. to change the farmer's technique. And then, uh, you know, you have to study and the soil has to be changed. Not changed, but the other uh, capable for yeah. the yeah. sake rice and, and uh, uh, so on. So it takes so long. However, they believe, uh, he believes that keeping the rice field will avoid um, building the house on the top of the rice field mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. the, if they're not selling enough rice then they would just, uh, close down the farm mm -hmm. and if they close down the farm the uh, land will become either far, uh, factory or store mm. or you know buildings so that would bring uh, damage the water yeah. they want to use so yeah. they wanted to keep uh, the nature as much as possible so uh, he's only 30 some mm -hmm. 36 years yeah. old but I think he's putting a lot of effort to mm. um, changing the environment around his area so please support him yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely it's so yeah. beautiful that uh, we think about the environment not only about like yeah. just making sake but make it in a sustainable way which mm. is what will we all need now, yes. given that situation. Because yeah. he needs to go on another hundred years, and yeah. that has to be passed down to uh, his son and mm. then uh, his uh, grandchildren. And uh, he wants to keep the base, to uh, create the base, so yeah. that the other his children can just accomplish more, mm. uh, better sake, better uh, life. Yeah. So I think it's really nice. Yeah. Great, great. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Yeah. Do you have anything? Yeah, I think that was, yeah, about to, to mention that the sustainability <laughs> is that he's been doing a great job. And then uh, also, I think he was featured in many magazines, right? And then in TVs, and you mm. can oh, find so many articles about that. There are bars of sake? Oh, yeah. Have yeah, you seen yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah, there was a documentary film, um, and actually, you know, shoot there. Yeah. So it's they're not using any actor, any actress mm -hmm. that real people appear in the film, and you can see what they're doing. They lived in the brewery, work together, have a you eat know, together, eat together, yeah. have a yeah. bath together, yeah. have fun together, yeah. but share so much. You know, their passion, their memory together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, do if you haven't, please do watch that. Um, then you will cry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I cried. I cried. I cried. I cried. Yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. Thing. Yeah. yeah, a lot of drama. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, Thank that's you. Really, yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
that's it for today. I'll be back with more interviews about various sake breweries and sake scenes around the world, as well as a few special episodes. In the meantime, buy a bottle of Tidurigawa sake, which is available on the London Sake website. They actually have a tasting set of three Tidurigawa sake, two of which we discuss with Asami and Masayo. I've noticed that London sake are on the extended Christmas break till February, so if you are listening to the episode when it's been just published, you'll have to wait a couple of weeks to order. If you are still unsure what sake to buy, look up the tasting notes section on my website, sugidama.co.uk, and of course, Tadirugawa Sake is available from various wine and spirit shops off and online. If you have any questions or suggestions about any sake topic, just drop me a line. My email address is alex at sugidama.co.uk, or you can tag me on Instagram or Twitter at Sugidama blog in one word, or now on Mastodon as well, where I am at Sugidama blog at universeodon.com. Again, if you like the episode and want more, hit the subscribe button, and you will get every new episode downloaded to your player as soon as it's out. If you would like to give me a bit of support, please leave a review or rate Sugidama podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, or anywhere you can do it. But more importantly, please share the podcast with your friends on your social media, chat apps, anywhere. The more new people start listening to Sugidama podcast, the more actively the podcasting platforms start recommending it. So it's the best way to bring new people to the world of sake and support my podcast. Thanks a lot for listening. Kampai. Sugi, sugi, sugi. Sugi dama blog. Sugi, sugi, sugi. Sugi dama blog.